concepts for the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. We have just discussed the line spectrum for hydrogen. Now, we saw lines of very specific energies correlating to specific wavelengths of photons. In the emission spectrum, those lines were caused by emission of these photons with just the right energy. In the absorption spectrum, we saw that if we shine white light on hydrogen atoms, then the wavelengths corresponding to the, that energy of photon will actually be absorbed by those hydrogen atoms, leaving the rest of the white light to pass through. Now, Bohr was intrigued by these experiments, and he developed a model of the hydrogen atom to explain these line spectra. And the model assumed that electrons travel in circular orbits of fixed radius around the nucleus. Okay? So that means at whichever orbit they are in, they are in a specific radius around that nucleus. Now, he also envisioned that they can jump from one orbit to another when they absorb or emit a photon. All right, so what does that look like? Now, this is a very, very crude drawing of the Bohr model of the atom. Okay, so the nucleus is large, just to you know make sure that you can see it on the screen, and then here's the n equals 1 orbit, which is closest to the nucleus, n equals 2 is farther out, and this spacing actually should be larger than what I'm showing, but for reasons of room on the slide, I kept it about equal spacing, but it should be larger, and of course there would be even more orbits outside. So again, just not enough room on the slide. But the size of each of these orbits, so n equals 1, n equals 2, and if n equals 3 were here, is based on the principal quantum number n. So as n gets larger, these orbits get larger. Now the n equals 1 orbit is the ground state. And that's where the electron is closest to the nucleus, and so this is the most stable place for the electron to be. Now, when an atom absorbs a photon, then the electron can move from the n equals 1 to a higher orbit, okay? Now, if the electron is already in a higher orbit, it can emit a photon and drop back to the ground state. So the bottom line is, is this electron can jump back and forth by emission or absorption of a photon. And the energy that it takes to go from one to the other is the difference in energy between the two n levels that the electron moves between. And it's also the same as the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted. So they have to match. Okay, so now let's introduce an energy state diagram. So this is a general concept that you're going to see not just in the Bohr model, okay? And basically what it is is a ranking of the energy levels in an atom. So in this case, this is for the Bohr model and it's for the hydrogen atom. So here energy is in joules, okay, and energy increases as you go up. So you can also see that the energy levels increase with increasing n, okay? So the energy of those energy states increases with increasing n. Now, n equals 1 is special. It's called the ground state. So that's the lowest energy. That's the most stable. All right? And this energy is equal to the energy an atom has when the electron is in that innermost orbit, that n equals 1 orbit for the Bohr model. Okay? And n equals 2, this is the first excited state. Okay? So ground state, n equals 1. Anything higher than n equals 1 is called an excited state. So n equals 2 is the first excited state. n equals 3 would be the second excited state. Okay? And same thing, if the electron is in that n equals 2 orbit, then it's at higher energy, it's farther away from the nucleus. And so that's not as favorable. So going up in energy is not favorable. It's not a good thing. It's an excited state for that atom. All right, so n equals 3 is the second excited state, n equals 4 is the third excited state, and so on. Now, there are more energy levels, of course, up here that I'm not showing. And if we go high enough, we'll eventually get to zero energy, 
Okay, because what I'm not showing is that this is negative down here, and then as they increase, they get closer and closer to zero. Okay, so now an energy transition is when the atom goes from one state to another state. And so we can see that this energy difference, we call it delta E, that's the energy difference between these two states. Okay? And so we calculate the energy difference as E final minus E initial. So in this case, we have, we're going from the N equals 1 energy state to the N equals 2 energy state. And so for E final minus E initial, here's our final energy state, and here's our initial. So it would be E2 minus E1. So if we had numbers here, we could actually just go ahead and calculate that. And we're going to use the Bohr model to be able to calculate changes in energy, these energies of transitions, a little bit later. Now, atoms absorb energy only at discrete quantized energies. And again, we saw this for atomic spectra. So only certain size packets of energy can be absorbed, and everything else just passes through. So it's not absorbed. Nothing happens. It just passes right through. And this, these discrete little packets of energy are absorbed as photons. All right? So again, only photons with specific wavelengths are absorbed. And that's why only discrete lines or very, you know, specific lines are observed in the line spectrum, as opposed to a continuum as we'd see for white light. Okay? So here's just a, I just want to show you a few more pictures of what's going on. So here's our nucleus, okay? Here's n equals 1. Now these would be going all the way around but I'm just showing a part of the orbit, okay? n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So here we can see a photon with a particular frequency, and the atom absorbs it, and the electron goes from n equals 1 to n equals 3, okay? And so that atom absorbed energy, so the energy is now higher than when it started. It absorbed energy in the form of a photon, so we had a positive change in energy for the atom. Now here's the same transition shown on an energy state diagram. So here we're starting at n equals 1. This specific frequency photon is coming in. It's absorbed. And the atom is promoted to n equals 3. And now it's in an excited state. And so again, the atom has more energy than it started with because it absorbed a photon. In this case, we would have E final, okay, so it started in N equals 1, went to N equals 3, so E final minus E initial would give the change in energy of the atom, which would come out to be positive because a photon was absorbed, and we went from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, so the atom now has more energy than it started with. Atoms can also emit photons. Okay, so this is what we saw with the emission spectra. So again, here's the nucleus. N equals 1 orbit, N equals 2, N equals 3. And here's an atom emitting energy in the form of a photon. So it's emitting energy with a certain frequency. Okay, we could do the same thing for wavelength. And now we are going from N equals 3 to N equals 1. So after the atom emits that photon, it's lower in energy. So it let energy out. It emitted energy in the form of a photon, and so now that atom is lower in energy. Okay, so again, here's the same type of transition on an energy state diagram. So we started at n equals 3, and a photon was emitted, and we ended up in the ground state. And so now the atom has lower energy than it started with. All right, so E final, N equals 1, minus E initial. Okay, so E, e final minus E initial, and that's going to give us a negative energy change. Okay, so going from N equals 3 to N equals 1, we're letting energy out, or we're emitting it, releasing it, whatever word you want to use. But the bottom line is the atom now has less energy than it started with. Okay, so it went from a higher energy state 
to a lower energy state. And in the process, it released or emitted energy in the form of a photon. And so the change in energy for the atom is negative for emission. Okay, so here's a cute little animation. I like this a lot. And basically it shows, so here the electron is in the n equals 1. It absorbs a photon, jumps to n equals 2. Okay, and then again, releases that photon. Now it's absorbing it again. And so you can see it going back and forth. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so just a little review, okay? So each line in the line spectrum, in those atomic spectra that we saw, corresponds to a different of emitted or absorbed energy. So here's this change in energy that we saw on the energy state diagram. And that's exactly equal to the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted, aside from sine. Okay, so we would put absolute value brackets uh, around delta E atom because the energy would be released if a photon was emitted. It would be positive for an absorption if it absorbs a photon. But this always matches. So the difference in energy between the levels is always the same as the energy of the photon. And then we can calculate either its frequency or its wavelength. And so also remember that the number, the positions, and the relative intensities of the lines give us a signature for each element. Now, Bohr's model of the atom was developed to explain lines observed in atomic spectroscopy, in particular the hydrogen atom. Okay, So again, it assumes that electrons travel in circular orbits of fixed radius around the nucleus and that they can move from one to another by absorption or emission of a photon. Now, the Bohr model only works for one electron atoms or ions, okay? And when we write it for hydrogen, then it's the same as the Rydberg equation. So it cannot be used for multi-electron atoms or ions at all.